Ramadan is here for you to become what? People of taqwa, people who are muttaqeen. And Allah is saying the hereafter is distributed, not on the basis of tribe, not on the basis of power, not on the basis of lineage, not on the basis of appearance. No, there is a sure portion for the believers, for those that are God conscious of Jannah. Allah is the one that has given this to me, life, food, sustenance, intellect, right? Skill, Allah is the one that has given it to me. Am I using it, using it in a way that serves him, i.e. serving this deen? One of the most dangerous predator in, in Africa, which is the Nile crocodile. They said when the crocodile sees the bird in the air, he makes himself visible and then he opens its mouth. And then the bird sees that, he goes and lands in the mouth of the crocodile <laughs> to do what? To clean his teeth, oh you know? God, oh <laughs> and and to, 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 to pick out these little pieces between his teeth so the crocodile gets his teeth cleaned, his mouth fresh, free from any infection or anything, and the little tiny bird gets his food. You know, that's in a way that you cannot really imagine. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does that. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30. The question from yesterday's juz, what is another name for Surah Ghafir? Please do go ahead and answer below, bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. We want to remind you as we are in the last 10 nights, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from all of us, Allahumma ameen. Please do inshallah ta'ala consider yaqeen for a donation, whatever you gave last year, match it this year or more inshallah. So if you're a first time viewer, then inshallah ta'ala will be your first time investing in this work, but we hope that you benefited bi'idhnillahi ta'ala and we need your support inshallah. And these are nights of sadaqah as well. And it being an odd night inshallah ta'ala, we hope that you will uh, continue to give bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. So please do donate generously and keep us all in your dua. Donate to your brothers and sisters in Gaza all over the world inshallah and keep all of the Muslims, all of the oppressed around the world in your dua. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uplift our ummah, Allahumma ameen. Uh, we're joined, of course, with Sheikh Abdullah Adur, as always. Sheikh. And for the first time, Sheikh Atif, our host here at the Rahma Center, alhamdulillah, the Imam, uh, here at the Rahma Center in California, uh, an incredible center, alhamdulillah, that's, that's nurt nurturing uh, conviction in people on the ground in many different ways, a beautiful place. I come to the center and I feel at home always, and a big part of the reason is uh, Sheikh Atif, uh, oh, yes. kind, yes. humble yes. soul, mashallah. We're blessed to have you, Sheikh Atif. Amazing. How are you, Sheikh? Alhamdulillah. Pleasure is ours, really. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless We are humbled and honored to have you here. Allah. And I'm honored to be in your company, and Sheikh Abdullah's company. Exactly. Allah. 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 Sheikh, what's in the water at Rahma Center? You, you and Sheikh Hassan Alwan, <laughs> what's happening here? Well, and how can we get access to that water, Sheikh? MashaAllah. <laughs> 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 no, but really, we, I know that you don't like the praise, but we, we appreciate you. Mm, and we appreciate the kindness and um, the way you've welcomed us, alhamdulillah. <laughs> and not only do we look forward to hearing your reflection, we have to give a shout out to uh, Wasida, inshallah uh, ta'ala. Uh, Tell us, uh, why did you name your daughter Wasida, <laughs> Sheikh? Wasida and Yunus, uh, of course. And uh, okay. Why did you name your daughter Wasila? Uh, so, uh, with Wasila, I was teaching the Shama'il of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That was um, in 2010. And uh, one of the students, he asked me after the class, um, are you still looking for a female name? I said, yes. He said, how about Wasila? In that night, I was teaching about the Wasila and Al-Fadila. What does it mean? What does Wasila mean? And all the hadith related to this topic. And, um, <clears throat> And so I said, Wasila, it is Hubban fi Rasulillah. Love for Rasulullah. And so I named her Wasila. Uh, and she has been, you know, the, the, the corners of my eyes. She's just uh, really the love of my life. And then Yunus, I wanted to call him Yaqub. Mm -hmm. Wasila wanted to call him Yusuf. Um, my wife wasn't really sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, sometimes Ayyub, mm -hmm. sometimes Awah or Awab. <laughs> two characteristics that were mentioned in the Quran about Ibrahim alayhi salam. So uh, my wife actually saw a dream one day that when she was pregnant in Eunice that she was uh, riding a whale. <laughs> <laughs> Allah so she got up in the morning and she <laughs> said the three of us were in the ocean and then we were playing with dolphins. And then I saw a massive whale co coming across uh, us or come closer to us. So I jumped on the back of it and 
I was happy and having fun. I said, oh, Yunus, خلاص, it's Yunus. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> so amazing, <laughs> mashallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect them Ameen. for you Ameen. and may Allah Ameen. bless you and preserve Ameen. your family, Shaykh. It's Ameen. a blessing Ameen. to have you here. Alhamdulillah. With that, inshallah ta'ala, we'll go ahead and get started. Alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. SubhanAllah, even though we start off with a very personal story, but but really, I think that for the believer, it is a reminder that Allah chooses for us. And sometimes, SubhanAllah, the wisdom of how Allah chooses for us and what Allah chooses for us doesn't show itself until much later on in life. And many times it doesn't show itself until the hereafter. Now, in Juz 24, we talked about how the disbelievers would threaten the Prophet Sallallahu and threaten the believers with the gods that are powerless besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَيُخَوِّفُونَكَ بِالَّذِينَ مِن دُونِهِ They try to scare you with those that they have taken as gods besides Allah. Meaning not only do they not understand the nature of those gods that they've taken besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they really don't understand Allah. And they don't understand the divine scheme. And they don't understand the way this whole divine revelation works. To them, this is all material and they have shaped their gods within that material you know, pull that drives everything for them in terms of their purpose, in terms of their existence. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dismisses those gods and dismisses the threats that come from those gods. Now subhanAllah, when you come into this juz, when you come into chapter 43, verse 32, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَهُمْ يَقُسِمُونَ رَحْمَةَ رَبِّكَ Do they distribute Allah's mercy? Is it them who choose or they who choose how Allah's mercy will fall? نَحْنُ قَسَمْنَا بَيْنَهُمْ مَعِيشَتَهُمْ فِي الْحَيَاةِ الدُّنْيَا وَرَفَعْنَا بَعْضَهُمْ فَوْقَ بَعْضٍ دَرَجَاتٍ We are the ones who choose and distribute their very livelihood amongst them in this worldly life. And then we elevate some above others. And Allah Azza wa Jalla goes on to say, لِيَتَّخِذَ بَعْضُهُمْ بَعْضًا سُخْرِيَّةً That some of them would employ others in service. وَرَحْمَةُ رَبِّكَ خَيْرٌ مِنَّا يَجْمَعُونَ And the mercy of your Lord is better than the wealth that they amass. Now I want you to pay attention to one thing. They don't understand how God works. They don't understand the powerlessness of their own gods and the divine scheme. And here, what is the rahmah that they're talking about? Many of the ulama of tafsir mentioned that this came down as a result of some of the elites of Quraysh saying, how come Allah did not choose us to be prophets? Okay, if God chose a prophet, why him? Why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Think about this, like almost to say like, we don't have a problem with the message. But, you know, if there's a God, why didn't God make us prophets? Because uh, we're richer than Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We come from this tribe, he comes from this tribe. Even though the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the most noble tribe and the most noble lineage. But why him? It should have been us, right? Literally, why me, why not me? The question here is based upon something so small, so superficial, that they think that prophethood even follows their dunyawi schemes, their worldly schemes, that he should have chosen one of us and not Muhammad Sallallahu So they threaten you with their gods, and then they wonder why your God did not appoint them to be prophets, right? So they don't understand the distribution of Allah's mercy. And Allah's mercy is everything from his Jannah to his forgiveness, to what he apportions for us in the hereafter, and what he apportions for us in this life as well. And Allah is saying, you don't get to choose how that distribution works not in the worldly sense or in the sense of the hereafter. And if Allah a apportioned for you something of this world and you responded with ingratitude, don't think that that is a blessing for you. In fact, it will be a curse for you. And if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave some believers a trial in this world, don't think that Allah is punishing them. That is a mercy for them, right? You don't understand how Allah's mercy is distributed. The scholars say, look how beautiful and perfect the Quran. You don't understand how Allah's mercy is distributed in the outward sense nor do you understand the mercies that are embedded in the inward sense. You don't get it. You don't get the distribution of blessing and trial of worldly and afterworldly or embedded within blessing and trial. You don't understand Allah's mercy. How can you know yourself? This is subhanAllah, a true manifestation of وَلَا تَكُونُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنفُسَهُمْ like you people forgot Allah and so Allah caused you to forget yourselves. You don't know Allah so you don't know yourself. You don't understand your lane because you don't understand Allah's dominion. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions afterwards and I'm going to uh, paraphrase for the sake of time but as you continue uh, to read on, 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, وَلَوْلَا أَنْ يَكُونَ النَّاسُ أُمَّةً وَاحِدًا لَجَعَلْنَا لِمَنْ يَكْفُرُ بِالرَّحْمَانِ لِبُيُوتِهِمْ سُقُفًا مِنْ فِضَّةٍ وَمَعَارِجَ عَلَيْهَا يَظْهَرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, were it not that people might be tempted to become one community of disbelievers, we would have supplied the homes of those who disbelieve in the most compassionate with silver roofs and silver stairways to ascend. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that we would have given their homes, uh, you know, the, the silver gates, we would have given them silver gates and we would have given them thrones that they could recline on. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, which is why the surah is named Zuhruf, we would have given them ornaments of gold. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa in kullu dalik, that all of this is what? It's nothing but mata'ul hayat al dunya. It's nothing but the fleeting pleasures of this fleeting world. And the hereafter is with your Lord only for the muttaqeen, only for those who are mindful of Him. Uh, I just have to subhanAllah connect this really quickly to Surah Al Zumar in the previous juz where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that those people, when they see their punishment, when they see that the hereafter is real, they would wish to come back to, their, to this world. Why? They would say so that we can be from the muttaqeen. We would be from those who are God conscious. Ramadan is here for you to become what? People of taqwa, people who are muttaqeen. And Allah is saying the hereafter is distributed, not on the basis of tribe, not on the basis of power, not on the basis of lineage, not on the basis of appearance. No, there is a sure portion for the believers, for those that are God conscious of Jannah. SubhanAllah, dear brothers and sisters, just think about this. There's a lot of uncertainty and a lot of questions about everything around us in the divine scheme, right? Why is this group of people being punished? Why is this group of people so easy? Why are they, why are they getting everything that they want in this life? Why is this person blessed? Why is this person being tested? All of these different things. But there is surety that those who believe and those who strive will enter into Jannah by Allah's mercy. May Allah Azza make us from the people of Jannah and the people who receive Allah's mercy. Allahumma ameen. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, I'll turn it over to Shaykh Abdullah. Barakallahu feekum. Bismillah wa salatu wa salam wa ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala amma ba'd. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa ahlu nukadatan min lisani yafqahu qawli ya rabbil alameen. I want to talk about particularly, it definitely has a connection with what Shaykh Omar was mentioning in regards to how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was describing, you know, the name of the chapter of Zuhruf, the ornaments, and giving them all of these ornaments that the nafs sometimes, the, or many times that the, 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 the human being, what they may desire. And understanding the reality of the nafs and the, the desire of the human being in relation to the heart, it's important to know that we as human beings, we may desire things that are not beneficial for us in totality because we do not have full knowledge of what is uh, 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 independently beneficial for us. There needs to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the source of tell, that tells us what is good and what is evil. Therefore, when one, when one relies on the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is how they will be of the successful ones. So from that, for example, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the dunya, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about this tangible world, this life, what we live in. We as Muslims believe that it is a temporary abode and it is a test, it is a, it is a course for us to live in and using what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us to be with him in the final abode, bi idnillah, dependent on his mercy, dependent on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is upon us to, to act, but not to rely on our actions. The verse that I want to talk about is in the chapter of Shura, chapter number 42, verse 20, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives a conditional sentence again, further giving a description of those and their irada. There are two particular words that I want to capitalize on here, and I will share them shortly, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, after Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, man kan yuridu hartha al-akhirati nazidi lahu fi harthi, wa man kan yuridu hartha al-dunya nuktihi minha, wa ma lahu fi al-akhirati min nasib. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever seeks the harvest of the hereafter, we shall increase for him his harvest. So the two words that I want to capitalize on, what, capitalize on, what is actually a verb and what is actually a noun? Irada and harth. Allah says, man kan yurid harth al-akhirah. Irada, what do you want? Mm. What do you desire? Mm. When we talk about happiness, which we talked about 
the, the individual, what they really, what really makes them happy. That ultimately goes back to what do you desire? And when you look at your desires, do you have introspection and in seeing, okay, is this, is this, Yanni, this desire, is it beneficial for me in the next life? Or is it something that I need to monitor and tame to where inshallah, yatahawwul, it can change to that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is the whole concept of jihad and nafs, fighting the self, fighting the desires, looking at the desire and seeing if it is beneficial. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as was mentioned before, tells us what is beneficial for us and what is harmful for us. What do we ultimately rely on as the source of goodness, the source of knowledge, the source of guidance? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man kan yuridu harth al akhirah, whoever wants the harth of the akhirah, the harvest, and interesting here, harth is crops. What are you investing your time, your energy, your efforts in? Is it planting a seed for the akhirah or is it planting a seed for the dunya? And what's beautiful is that irada can even be the niya. What are you intending when you do, when you go to work? What is your ultimate intention? When you punch in early or you punch in on time, is it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ultimately? And that is what is so beautiful about the concept, to be fair, of religion and in Islam in particular. Religion being you have this connection with a deity and what you do should be in service of that deity ultimately. But with Islam, who is the deity and what does he say that he is not? So when we punch in for work, when we raise our children, when we eat, is it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Meaning that Allah is the one that has given this to me, life, food, sustenance, intellect, right? Skill, Allah is the one that has given it to me. Am I using it, using it in a way that serves him, i.e. serving this deen, being good to my family, smiling at my brother, apologizing for the sake of Allah, sending a text message at the beginning of Ramadan saying, I'm sorry, even if you feel that you're right, but you're doing it for a greater cause, the purpose of life. Harf, what are you investing in? So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Man can you do harf al akhirah what does he say? Nazid lahu fi harfi. We will increase him in that harvest. You are investing in something that is long lasting. Bel tuk tirun al hayat al dunya. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, rather you and you prefer this life. Well, akhiratu khayrun wa abqa. And the next life, the afterlife, is better and everlasting. That is important for the Muslim to understand. Nazid lahu fi harfi. That he said, we will increase him in this harvest. Woman can you read harf al dunya? Nuktihi minha. And whoever wants the heart of this dunya, the, the harvest of this life, which is temporary, people trying to impress each other to get respect, but it doesn't really go anywhere because when you die, they will forget about you two weeks later. What about the next life? What are you investing in, in the next life? What are those actions when you invest in the next life? Those people that were in the dunya, they will look up to you, they will admire your children when they see that you're a person that was someone that acted and the reason behind it was for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the muqallib al qulub the one that changes the hearts is the one that can put that love of you and living the legacy, O oh fathers, O oh mothers in this life from your children. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions for those that want this dunya, that want this temporary life, and there is nothing for him in the hereafter. It's important for us to remember that with the intention, the intention, the intention to do it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is what will transcend this physical life. And that is what will last inshallah in the next life and be that which will serve as an incentive after the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that act for the sake of the, the akhirah, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Verily, he has control of all things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala rasulullah wa ala alihi wa ashabi wa man wala. Again, I'm so really, I'm so blessed to be in your company. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you. Bless your families, protect you from any type of fitna. Allahumma ameen. Amen. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless Yaqeen Institute. Amen. I really think Yaqeen now is probably the best thing that is happening in the country. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase it. Allahumma ameen. The ayah that I pick for today is a verse in Surah Ashura. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَوْ بَصَطَ اللَّهُ الرِّزْقَ لِعِبَادِهِ لَبَغَوْ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَلَكِنْ يُنَزِّلُ بِقَدَرٍ مَّا يَشَاءُ إِنَّهُ بِعِبَادِهِ خَبِيرٌ بَصِيرٌ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, 
If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had extended excessively his provision for his servants, they would have committed transgression. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends down by measure as he wills or as he likes. Before we talk about the ayah, we know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, risk comes from him. And he called himself a razaq the provider. Not only did he call himself a razaq he called himself khayru raziqeen, the best of providers. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives all of his servants, regardless really of their number, regardless of the quantity of the provision. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives believers and unbelievers, Muslims and non-Muslims, you know, righteous or evil, he gives. And if he desires, he provides without limits. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقَى There is absolutely no creature on earth except its provision comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Can you imagine how many living creatures are there on earth? And not just on land, also those creatures that they live in the water, in the depth of the ocean and, 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 and subhanAllah and the seas and the rivers, this is just incredible. He knows where it lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He knows where it lives. So can you imagine those creatures, they live under rocks in the bottom of the ocean, how many they are. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about them and He provides for them. He also arranges the means of their sustenance in ways sometimes we understand and in some times we don't understand. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala arranges the means of their sustenance in ways that we can apprehend or comprehend. And in some times we don't really understand how it worked. I love animals and I spend a lot of time watching animals. Unfortunately, but um, one time I was watching a, a film, and it was about an Egyptian tiny, an Egyptian tiny bird. It's called Blover Bird, and they said that this bird has an incredible, interesting, intimate relationship to one of the most, you know, uh, one of the most dangerous predator in in Africa, which is the Nile crocodile. They said when the crocodile sees the bird in the air he makes himself visible and then he opens its mouth and then the bird sees that he goes and lands in the mouth of the crocodile <laughs> to do what to clean his teeth oh you know <laughs> and, and to, 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 to pick out these little pieces between his teeth so the crocodile gets his teeth cleaned his mouth fresh free from any infection or anything and the little tiny bird gets his food you know, that's in a way that you cannot really imagine. It's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does that. And then we, the Quran and the Sunnah taught us about ways how to increase our risk and all of that. You know, istighfar, spending, keeping ties to your family. And some people sometimes they say, I do all of that, but I still do not get what I wanted. And that's where the ayah comes in. If Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had excessively, you know, given all of his servants whatever they want, they would definitely would have committed transgression on earth, right? But he sends down by measure as he likes. You know, Allah gives and he knows how much to give and he knows who to give what to. And that's out of his infinite wisdom, subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying in that verse, I care about you. I care about your safety. I care about your dunya and your akhirah. So I will give those whom I love enough to get by so they don't get distracted. That also was demonstrated in the sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam when you know, some money he was distributing some money and somebody came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, give so and so is a believer. And he said it three times and the Prophet Wasallam, after he finished, he said, you know, when I receive money, I give people, I give some people money, but I withhold from those whom I love more out of fear that they, that they will fall into destruction, out of fear that this money could be a source of trouble for them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows how much to give and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows what works and what doesn't work. So alhamdulillah, 
for everything that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides. Allah mm-hmm. Beautiful reflections. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for that. I mean, I mean. Uh, mm-hmm. you know, subhanAllah, just it's a thought like every ant, how many little bugs are created, mm-hmm. how many things that we can't even see. And its risk is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you think about the depths of the ocean, indeed, like if someone was to scuba dive, and you poke at all of these different things under the ocean and try to find this tiny, tiny, tiny little fish. And Allah decreed when that fish would come into existence, mm-hmm. when it would die, how it would eat, how it would, every single element of its list. So how foolish are we to question the risk of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for us? And we think we're so big and we're not. You know, if you think about us in the grand scheme of things, the bottom of the ocean looks so tiny to us, but if you fly up a few thousand feet, we're just as tiny. Mm. And all of our risk is upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and every angel that we can't see, not a hand span in the heavens, subhanAllah. But the Prophet mm. said, except that there's an angel so that is there. Allah Azza wa Jal has decreed that to be there. So how foolish are we when we think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not taking care of us and not considering us, subhanAllah. Mm. So Amazing so reflections in it. And it makes me think about, you know, the most irrational arguments are used by supposedly the most rational people to deny God. Like they think they're so rational mm-hmm. when they deny Allah and they deny <laughs> the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it's so foolish, like it's mm-hmm. counterintuitive. What are you talking about? Like you think <laughs> you distribute this list? You yes. really think you're oh, in charge? Stuff. Like do you realize Abu Jahad, you're in Mecca, like, you know, even by, by the virtue of the world at the time, like you got the Roman Empire and you got the Persian Empire and, uh, little Abu Jahl thinks he's in charge of the world, right? He thinks he thinks he, he he's entitled mm. to everything in the world. Like what happens to people's minds mm. that they become, as Allah, it's just tawfiq, the, the sentence uh, or the word self-centered. Self-centered. Yeah. So self-centered. You think the world revolves around you. Mm. And so, you know, if if one thing doesn't go your way, then the whole world is useless. The whole world is not functioning properly. If one thing doesn't go my way, the whole world is off balance and, and nothing nothing is actually going right. And that's just something, subhanAllah, a product of, of the arrogance of man and the arrogance of a human being to think, you know, I am, I am uh, the axis uh, of the world and everything has to revolve around me. May Allah Azza wa forgive us. Um, I, mean, I, mean. I think, Sheikh, one thing that I'd, I'd bring up and I'd love to hear both of you sort of reflect on this. There's a principle in Tazkiyah. Mm-hmm. Allah gives from this dunya to the one that he loves and the one that he does not love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he only gives the akhirah to whom he loves. Mm-hmm. He only gives from the hereafter mm-hmm. to whom he loves. How do you explain that to someone, you know, uh, that is on the other side when it comes to the worldly affairs at this moment? How do you explain to someone, Allah loves you, when they feel like they're being deprived and they see someone who's clearly so far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm-hmm. you tell them that that's not a manifestation of Allah's love. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think the first thing is, um, it's getting to know Allah. Like, who is he really? What are his, I, really, subhanAllah, just the names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what they mean, how they are manifest, and then how does it play in my life? Because definitely they're manifesting in your life, but it's again about the perception. So being around those that may remind you of those beautiful names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then also remembering it's not about, you know, what are you doing to make, it's a level of self-accountability as well. What are you doing to learn about that and to see those names manifest? And I think that's, that's very, very important because we always ask, remember you mentioned before, it's not about asking ourselves, even in, in Gaza, what's going on in Gaza, what are you doing, Allah, but it's, what am I doing? Right. I think that's very important, the self-accountability. If you are acknowledge the fact that there is something greater than you, you have to ask, what am I doing in regards to that which is greater than me? So firstly, yeah. knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before going on to Allah. Else. Mm. Yeah, what this is saying? beautiful. I was actually thinking about the same thing, you know, knowledge, knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, knowledge of the self. You know, knowledge of the self as well. You know, some people sometimes, they're Muslims, they're close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah didn't give them much, but they are content. Mm -hmm. So that's coming from their knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah places this contentment in their hearts. They please with whatever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives them. You know, Um, the the other thing also that, that people sometimes they get confused about is why we always think that rizq 
is just money. Right. You know, um, your intelligence could be your risk. Exactly. Right. Your good friend could be your risk. Your your the skills that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala give you could be your your risk. Absolutely. So it's, it's not just money. You know, as Abu Talib said, <laughs> when he went to uh, propose on behalf of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, "What is money but a fleeting shadow?" And I mean, we don't want to underestimate the money. Money is definitely important. It's definitely right. important, but it becomes. You know, a curse as as Absolutely. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam warned people Absolutely. against it when people consider it to be the goal of this Absolutely. life. Absolutely. You know, um, Allah subhanahu wa taala promises jannah in the akhirah. Did not promise eternity and richness in this world. Allah. And the Muslims are waiting for that bliss in the Absolutely. akhirah. Inshallah. Uh-huh. So, mm-hmm. Sheikh, when you say that money is just a shadow, what you're saying is people should give it to Yaqeen. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> or to me. <laughs> <laughs> to me. <laughs> Sheikh, ma'alish, uh, the, the alligator. Can you, the, that's another risk right there. So, hold on, hold on. Because this is what the fitrah, inshallah. The alligator, when he sees the bird, he opens his mouth in order for the bird to come and take the remaining food from the teeth of the alligator, yeah. which further cleans the teeth of the alligator, further... Risk from Allah for the bird? Really? SubhanAllah. What's the name of the bird for all of the young children out there and, and older children as well? Myself? <laughs> it's a plover, Egyptian, Egyptian plover bird. Right. And the crocodile is the Nile crocodile. Nile. Um, and, it, and it's just incredible about Amazing. how the, you know, the relationship between the two. And that's not mm-hmm. the only thing. Allah, that's not the only thing. I watched a, a film probably 10 years ago about how the risk is distributed. That film was not actually given by a lecturer, like, like a Muslim speaker or anything like that, it was just documentary. But they were talking about the provision and how certain, food, how certain animals get their certain food. I was sitting there, well, I was weeping the entire time because I found myself, subhanAllah. I love this. SubhanAllah. Yeah. <laughs> so I love animals and I love watching animals. So yeah. Animals raise your iman when you learn. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, why they do it was the Sunnah of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as well. He was a shepherd and so, he looked at Adam and yeah. lived with them. Communication. Close to them. Yeah. Absolutely. I would love to do more. We're way over time. So we're just going to oh. say, everyone, go study animals and pray tonight, <laughs> inshallah, and open up your perception. But we loved having you, Sheikh exactly. If you're a risk for us tonight, exactly. Allah exactly. subhanahu exactly. bless you. And please keep us in your du'as tonight, everyone. Nice. We'll see you tomorrow, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.